at God's Rage. Chapter 9 Locklear's uh, eyes hardened. At some level he wanted to believe. He had seen something in the instant of the case collapse. It was irrational, no doubt. A vision he had gone to church for himself to soften the blow of Butter's death. As a man who had stood against many armies, Locklear knew all too well about the last second uh, vision seen on the battlefield. There was absolutely no chance that Butters could have survived the blast, none. By some agency beyond his control, he turned back the melancholy that threatened to overtake him, rationally brooking his grief for the last magician, lost magician. There was still an army to contend with, still mortal to slay, still kingdom to defend. There would be a time for grieving when it was finished. Such dumb way to die, biting off the birds bitterly. Signor James nodded. He died a good death, Loki. I wouldn't have wished him to go, but he did die, die to save others. You said that all the time, James, but there's no good way to go or die. They are all bad. James stared in his old friend and saw coldness that glimmered in Locker's gaze. He had come to know that look over the years, an expression that had first manifested itself at the Battle of Armigar, years before the, when Locklear's girlfriend, Bronwyn, had been slain by the troll. A bit of Loki had died then, and that place had grown in the seed that bloomed in the deadly and superior night. But in all that time, he had never forgetting, forgiven himself, letting the girl die. You are not mad, Patrus is dead. You are angry that you didn't die in his place. Locklear's uh, eyes flashed protest, but suddenly he reached for the, his sword as three flashes appeared in the woods. Spellweavers, Locklear shouted. Surprise! Disliking the fact that they would have been in a disadvantage against magical opponent without Patrick James did himself as he grabbed his, for his weapon. Stay your sword, signiers. I believe it's some still considered the root in the kingdoms to skewer, skewer your friends. Duke Book! Never have I been half so relieved to see a friendly face. We are expecting more than magicians. Turan magicians, with James, or rather magicians trained by the Turani. No mortal witch would have, have the cap capability to make a rift machine, nor would they chance by chance going into battle with just poor odds of success. I still should like to know how exactly was the Telecan managed to make contact with Makala. I had hoped that the Mordel would have been wary of another such attack following the defeat of Murman Damus ten years ago. Prince Saruta said that uh, they hope to find Murman Damus and free him. The Mordel are convinced that we have been holding him captive all these long years. So Gorath has told me, doubtless Makala exploited the belief of this his advantage. That at least explains one wrinkle, the model have never forgiven us that loss. But why is Makala doing all this? Obviously he isn't this uh, to rescue old dead model leader. For the moment I believe I know, but I don't wish to stay until I have taken a better look at something. This la last problem I will have to unravel myself with some assistance from Korath and Oven. From here, I think we will be able to teleport into caverns, uh, caverns beneath Sedanon. That's it is there our objective lies. What of Locklear and myself? Once Prince Aruta arrives with his reinforcement, deliver my assurance that he will not face anything magical from the mortal. If Makalan indeed has assistance, they will be under uninterested uh, in the prince. They will be waiting for me. All right, now we are at Setanon. Last, last dungeon. Death of Macros. B 
before we move any further, I'm of a mind to prepare what, what are we, are we are going to encounter. Located in these two chambers is an artifact known as Lifestone, crafted by the ancient Valhero. It has powers beyond even my comprehension, but we know that it was crafted for the purpose of great destruction. It was this that the false moon Mandamus sought to achieve during the great uprising. False moon Mandamus, what do you mean? He was not truly a mortal. He was a Panthanian who took the semblance of a mortal so he could achieve his goal. The point of the point is irrelevant. What he sought was to activate the limestone. If that happened, the devastation of Triniama would have seen garden compared to what would have left of Midkemia. So if the Valhair are dead, what does it matter? If no one does, knows how to use it, then it can't be any danger to us. Not so. The souls of Valhair are bound to the stone, and uh, it may be that tampering with it may allow them to emerge once more, perhaps even to inhabit living your body. Uh, even in that symbiotic state, we have no certain way to know, knowing what destruction they would be capable of. And this was basically the story of the Valhero armor and Thomas, because the Valhero armor had, 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 the, had the spirit of its former Valhero master. So Michael wants, me, uh, wants to destroy everything. He's not mad, but his curiosity might lead to more trouble than he imagines. Hopefully we can find and stop him before he can do anything catastrophic. But why tell us about any of this? I'm a square from Tyburn, a Goratis renegade from North Lats. Isn't that dangerous? Your stations are unimportant. I, I was once a kitchen boy in court of Crydee. I trust you because apparently macros prefigured your involvement in this and did nothing to warn me before he left mid -chemia. For whatever reason, he I think he believes it necessary you be involved in these events and he invariably acts for the greater good, however mysterious his reasons might be. This is much the same as magical perim perimeters of the Timonan gods we used. Mughal must have learned their nature while he was there. Can you disassemble uh, it? Not directly. We will have to go to the source of its generation and then make the problem there. So if we find Makala, we will be able to remove it. No, Makala is already within investigating the livestone as we speak. He will have a spell weaver scattered throughout this location to maintain the seal of this power. I don't think he was absolutely certain that I would have found the cup. So he knew you were going to find it. About two years ago, he was absent from the mid chemia for a number of months. Something after I informed him that I would divulge no more about this chamber and the events at the end of the great uprising of the model. When he reappeared, he dismissed his absence, saying that he had been traveling. Do you think he ran across the cup himself? Among other things, it's the only way he could have known about its powers and left it for me to discover. It's also probable that the time he decided to make a contact with the model. It's time we found the six. Telecast magical assistance. Not having seen them, I can't be certain whatever they are, native or not, but I suspect they aren't mortal spell uh, weavers, despite whatever appearance they ma may have been using. Makala has played, played your ruler like full of fool. They can not stand to benefit in the slightest form of this raid, despite anything Makala might have indicated. Enough speci speculation. The sooner we found the six, the sooner we'd get this sealed down. Okay, well, so we need to kill the kill the research. Spell we were awaited. We will talk to uh, expect you Milan Milamber. That's a book's book's name in in uh, Surani. The spell weaver said, raising his staff, and we were instructed you were not to pass in the livestone chamber. You cannot win. Okay. Somehow I can read the whole text.
Now we can actually go to the end battle. And it's reasonably close even. The hallway widened. In a few moments the path turned, opening into a large chamber where the dragon lay curled on the ground. I caught you but was unable to reach your mind, the magic unveils amulet which renders this body feeble and he's in the process of disabling the last of the defenses which bring the lifestone. Makala is reckless, but I do not think we have a crippled you permanently. He will have crippled you permanently. He must have anointed some hollow hero artifact, likely a product of Lyron Bactos, the master of dragons. While he would have been capable of ruling your mind, he could still command your, your dragon's flesh. My inability to know why a future blinded us to the possibility. It's something we will have to attend to later. Korat, I wish you to stay here, then guard the oracle. Thank you. It means me that protection is necessary. Buck, you may require my strength when you reach the Tsurani Magigan. You will have a difficult time in the limestone chamber. No, Gorath. You have already given too much to this quest and seen what should have been seen by the no one other than myself. You wouldn't never so much as, as a scratch Makala skin before he burned you in to Cinders. He will be more respectful in the presence of magicians and less likely to do anything rash. For now, you have a responsibility to guard the oracle. Buck hurried Owen under the archway. The corridor and angled sharply downward, its rough earthen floor littered with a slippery ceramic material, which crackled underfoot with each step taken. In places, the boy glimpsed ancient fires, uh, frescoes of a mortal looking race, who stared back uh, at him with the eyes filled with the enigmatic hate, the cause of which have been millions of years dead. Following the soul plane, they arrived to the last what looked like a stone wall, but quickly Buck muttered few words and the door simmered away into nothingness. Beyond lay the west chamber and Makala was waiting for them. I hoped you more for you, Makala. When first ca you came to us years ago for the assembly, I sensed your heart full of dark calculation, but I had, had, had thought with you was you wouldn't grow to gentleness. We Tsurani are of course bereft to of that quality. Save your parading for the assembly. Your returned my friendship with the cold contempt, treated my daughter as a wolf to his prey, and have defied my interdict to visit Satan on Assume nothing between us now other than respect to the between practitioners. Why has the assembly of magic and seen to fit the pros itself in the mid our affairs? As our assembly was unable to read consensus on the matter, they hesitate to dabble with the matters that might, might arouse your ire. Otherwise disposed with the small problem concerning the house Akoma, they decided that those who felt that this investigation necessary would contact it of their own volition. I do not took that responsibility. I should be careful taking such a weight upon your shoulders. It may yet crush you. Ten years ago you engaged in the Battle of Bar with the, the Valheru entrance to your world. The battle of it in which you requested the uh, service of several company Tsunari food soldiers. At such, the battle became a matter of imperial interest and the fell within the jurisdiction assembly. You, however, have thwarted all the efforts to gather information about that battle 
and have forebode the investigation of Setanan. Many sons of great houses fell upon, but their bodies were never recovered for the proper rights. Your attempts to evasion are excusable, Makala. Never has the assembly concerned itself with the souls of the dead, and I don't believe they are practicing new fond piety. You wish to learn about how I, def how I defeated the Valhero. Indeed. How could, could we not? The Valhero were a race of unspeakable evil and dread power, who once, once nearly destroyed our world. Although my brothers harbor the greatest, you the greatest respect, Bug, you would be incapable of turning aside such monstrous power unaided. Judging by the numerous defenses that ring this abandoned town, we assume that the only possible solution, you concealed the thing of power, the caverns here. I cannot fault you your fears, but your methodology has been despicable. The livestone has was created in the darkest days of the mad god's race. Rage. Rage. A war which the Valheros drove to destroy the gods of Midkemia. With it, uh, they believed they could conquer every corner of the uh, universe, and all the likelihood they could have. It must have entirely locked away here, and its ex existence must be die out with that small handful of us that lo have looked upon it. You will speak to none of, of the assembly about what you have found here, uh, or you should answer to me. I cannot in good conscience keep such a secret. What if such a weapon were wielded against the Empire? Could not such a weapon lay waste to all her children? We cannot simply bury such a weapon. It must be destroyed for the good of all fortune, uh, future generations of the Empire and the Kingdom. Impossible. We have no way to know, to know what would happen if we attempted to destroy it. It may be not be tested without patiently disturbing the Valhero, whose souls are no, no occupied the stone. As I suspected, you have done nothing to study it. Great through your power may be you haven't had an inkling what the secret lie within that stone. Its very existence is obscene. It must be not fall into the hands of hostile power. Makala, do not tamper with the stone. It must not be left untouched for the good of all. I just now as my right as the great one of the assembly of the Magican. It must be destroyed back for the good of the Empire. Missed. 94% and missed. Oh no.
but I can't, can't see Makala. Apparently, I don't, can't see. Missing the turn because I'm clicking wrong button here. Those doggies are actually actually in the way. I can target Makala. Now, now I can do something else. Let's use the firestorm here. Slightly, slightly expensive spell, but let's go. He has a huge amount of huge, huge sponge of, of <laughs> hit points. Oh, look at that. That's wrong. Okay, <laughs> slap. <laughs> 
Pack, it was over. Book st- stared at the Magala's life, uh, lifeless form as it lay silently on the hard stone floor. Hiding from the grief that uh, threatened to overcome his pain of exhaustion, he turned to Owen, so the boy was on, on, knee, on his knees. Boy was about to help the boy. Book was about to help the boy to his feet when he noticed strange light filling the chamber. The lifestone pulls warmed. Race of the Emerald Blood touched over his solemn features, deepening the hollows of him of his face as he approached the blood blasted turf occupied moments before by Makala's covering towering raids. Nearby book spoke softly his voice diffusing of the cavern falls into a thousand bouncing, bouncing whispers. It may be difficult, Buck said, but I don't that judge him too harshly over I perform acts nearly as monstrous in the name of common good. I find her that hard to believe, Owen replied. You are in a good, you are a good man. So was he in his own way. Loyalty ma- can sometimes misguide with the finest of men. Both magic and flints in unison as the mooted sword strikes erupted in the corridors outside of the chamber. With startling rapid, rapidly the sounds approach dissolved in the pattering, desperate footfalls and howling half screamed watts. Watch yourself, book showed that across the cavern someone was coming. Harried by the shadowy assailant, Korak blacked into the chamber with his sword flying in a defense arc before him. Repeatedly, razor like fists flashed out of the darkness to challenge him, but he skillfully turned the attacks to his advantage. Finding the rhythm of his opponent and fainted right when he was expected to move left, and warrior barreled past him, Dele Khan, Owen exclaimed. Tripped up the by Gorat at the mortal leader crashed in, uh, to the ground, sno- snarling uh, uh, all the way while slavering fury. Attempting to rise, he slashed upward with his gauntlet fist, but brutally crossed, stepped inside the, his guard and delivered a rain of heavy kicks until the o- older warrior fell quiet. I suggest su- su- you lie still, Gorat snapped. We, uh, we are wiping rivulets of blood from his face. I may decide to kill you yet. I hear you, Delecan crooked. His voice weak. For a long moment, he remained curled in a ball, his bird tearing raggedly from his throat. As he clenched and unclenched his fists, the extreme effort he turned his life head and looked upon the mesmerizing light of the light stone and froze. No buck shook his head. Apprehensive, tw- well, willing with him, like a, pla- a black lake, as he caught the mortal's expression. Stumbling forward, he tried to interpose himself in the way, but his falling strength abandoned him. No. Svatin Korat effortlessly sighed as, as he rose Delekan's eyes, flashed with the re- reflected radiance. Like a puppet on the string, he began to stagger forward. His steps almost childish in their partling. Undoubtedly, something had, had control of his mind. Dead spot alive, Korat left to the attack and told that heart into a mortal leader, his miscalculated blow carrying the blow both of them not down but forward, forward into the love stone. Together they reached for the sword. What madness is this? Who? Something within the sword consumes and fight it him, Ashen Sugar. The Valhera souls trapped within the stone are slipping their bones. We have to kill them both. What about Korat? You must own evil. I can't fight him much. Any longer I can hold him. Now. Pretty. This game has a pretty high body count, by the way. Owen started bangling the, at the lifestone. We killed him, Owen said bitterly. Bitter hurt in his words. He came to kingdom to warn us and we killed him. Don't be petulant, Owen. This isn't time for it. Glaring at Buck with shock, Owen opened his mouth to reply but found that arrogant words failed him. Angered he had, he turned as, as to leave but felt the master's magic hand on his shoulder. Wait, Buck said. His voice more, more gentle than it had been. Meeting a boy's hateful gaze, he motioned him for him to stay. You must understand, Korat was the dead the minute he t- touched the sword. We had hesitated another moment longer, but he and Delekan would have be, would be dead. 
and uh, unspeakable evil would be on uh, be loose on our world. When Delegant began to change, you could see the Valher were attempting to mold them into a form they could use. Do you remember the terrible devastation used Sato Timinaria? That would be a paradise compared to lives we would lead under the, their dominion. I'm telling you this because you now have a knowledge and abilities which come with the terrible responsibilities. You will have to make decisions far worse than this someday if you continue down the path you are on. You are going to have a learn to think before you act, but never to regret your decisions, right or wrong. Otherwise, you will be slowly begin to not to make decisions at all. But how can I know which are the right decisions? Owen asked. How can I be sure? Book squeezed his shoulder. You need to live the, to a ripe old age to know that. I am not uh, I am not nearly old enough to have an answer. All I noticed that Macros the Black once told me. He said that train those around me well to make them powerful but also make them loving and generous. I see those things in you. The battle was against them. Enrage, war leader Mordolf, called orders to his terror-stricken lieutenants as he revived, revived their weakening lines from the safety on elm sh sh shaded the hill. Watched with the fury as his forward ranks of pikemen retreated under expected, unexpectedly heavy rain of kingdom longbow fire. In a short while, the combined mass of Prince Arutha's re relief forces and the garrison of Setanan would be in a position to push them into the only quarter of the city where they would be unable to retreat, and when it, then it would be only a matter of hours before. They would be forced to surrender or die in a place set to flush them out. Or leader Mordolf, you must come quickly. Hearing a commoner's commotion to his left, he muttered the silent curse on Delegan's head for leading them to this fool's errand. When he when snapped his attention to a small group mortal who were ad advancing towards him, faces flushed with the excitement. Their leader, a um, scar-faced whelp, of twenty summers knelt reverently at his feet before breathlessly delivering his message. At the keep, your father has taken the Prince Arutha, and I believe the Mark One is with him. The tide the battle turns. Stalking skeptically after the, his messengers, he progressed to the ruined avenue in, into a cobbled central square filled with con conversion motor warriors. About uh, them, Delecan mounted the fire black and parapet walk at the key, proceeding later bound her. Proceeding by the mysterious robed figure and the prince of Grondor, the la later bound hand and foot, unable to do anything but follow where he was led. Brethren size fell over the square and the rope clad figure stepped past Arutha and Teleka, the archer's turret, hand placed over his right breast. Tripping open his white garment, he revealed a body made gaunt with hunger, but bearing an unmistakable cape. Bakeable, curling purple beast mark which resembled a dragon, and this was a mark of legend. Instantly, a chant rose among the modern warriors, many of them falling to their knees in ecstatic reverence. I've returned, oh my children, Murmandamus shouted from the battlements, revealing glittering sword of gold. It hills set with stones of lapis. Hidden deep in the chambers of earth below the feet, Prince Arutha sought to keep this sword from me. From us, the key of our future, from ten years he imprisoned me in the bubbles of this hell against my will. But you have freed me, he said, sweeping a arbit with, with the sword. Ten years ago, I promised you dawning of the new age. It was repaid with abandonment, but that I am free because of you who have followed Delecan, believed in our dream. You have demonstrated your worthiness and loyalty. And as a reward, I, you shall all bear fitness to the death of the Lord of the West and final fulfillment of the prophecy. A dark cheer ripped to the crowd as Murmandamus held the sword aloft and faced Arutha. His lips curled back in wicked smile as he advanced in the dazed prince. 
Considering the things that had been done to him, the crowd thought likely former leader would execute Arata slowly. And then they, they were ripe for a spectacle. Abruptly, Murbandars halted beneath him. The stones of the keep began to tremble as of entirety of the structure were beginning to shake by invisible hand. His look of the proud defiance suddenly turned to outrage. What treachery is this? Murmandar screamed. Who meddles with the prophecy? As he Afin answered, Thunder peeled overhead, annoying the arrival of Great Dragon and Rider, with the pair seemingly having formed very air itself. Floating down from their dizzying heights, they descended to a point level where the keep's rooftops the dragon wings beating the great gales of wind against the crowd. The prophecy is false, Murmandamus, as are you, Book shouted from the dragon's back. You have betrayed the folk of the kingdom and those your own people for a lie. It's time for your terror to come an end. At Book's command, out of the duct, narrowly averting death as the dragon skimmed low overhead, lashing the battlements. With his titanic whip like tail, Hurling both Mormon Damus and Delectan screaming like babies in the horrified horse who watched them far below. Fanning away from the impact of the two bystanders hastened to escape, fearing the possible second attack from the flying dragon and its equally menacing rider. Standing in the midst of the crowd, Mordov looked on the void and pain in fear. His voice climbed and clear as he addressed the goblin lieutenant who stood near him. Gather your kin and go to retreat. Lord Mordef, we may still win, lay us. Calling the green skinned creature, Mordef lifted him off his feet. No, I now lead the nations of the north, and my first command is that I shall lead us home. Go to the retreat. Mordef spat, hurling the goblin bat reverse. The day is theirs, but I must see something first. Disregarding the panicked warriors who sought egress from the square, Mordor packed his bay over the burning rubble, where his father lay dead. His wolfish eyes reflected only the clouds of smoke, which drifted through the Setanon. For all his father's grand schemes, for all, for all things he had thought to accomplish, this was nothing now, nothing but the folk of dead flesh. He had been fooled through the, to, 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 to Zurani Magica. Leaning over the dead body, Mordor stretched up the golden sword which Murmandanus had retrieved from the governors below. Although he knew very little of the prophecy which had been inspired both his father and Murmandamus to their deaths, he had no intention of wasting little of they had gained in the battle. Perhaps when he returned to the Northlands, he could still find a way to harness the power of the artifact assuming it had any powers at all. Mordolf, turning to Mordolf war leader, had no time to react before the lightning quick assassin was upon him driving a knife skillfully through his left eye and deep into his brain. Killing him in instantly without the sound, he crumpled to the ground across his dead father, dropping the sword even before he could raise it. Smiling coldly, Narap <laughs> bit through his knife and wiped clean the grey flesh from the its bone blade, when then snatched Numandamus' breast sword from where it lay abandoned on the ground. One by one, he had borne witness to the destruction of this rival Skorath of the Ardenian, his son brother Nago, Delekan, and his son Mordolf, all destroyed by own their, their own greed or inaction. Now there would be a matter of dealing with the bitch Lialan, who had been Delekan's mate, and then he might even claim the throne of Sarasagoth for himself, assuming the bastard get of the former war leader claimed them right. It would be small consequence, however, for now he possessed what they had all sought. Assuming he lived, he would learn to exploit his newfound advantage. Receiving his knife to his boot, he spotted a slow moving band of mortal limping towards the dim wood, and he hurried to join them, bending with the crowd in the same manner in which he had come to set an unrecognizable face in the mob of the beaten and the angry. Arutza watched, watched mid, with a mild wonder as Buck conjured the prince to obligate the annoying existence, then just as quickly eliminated the remarkable lifelike illusions of Delekan and Murmandamus, 
who lay crumbled on the ground below the keep. The corpse of Delegar's son would have been have to be removed later by less arcane means. I shame we didn't have you with us at Armengar cousin, Buck, Arthur said. A permanent one should such as that before Murmandam's troops might have won us the battle. Buck shook uh, he said. Spectacle won't win your battles, but at least it may prevent the Dark Protoss from plotting another attack against Zetanon. With the dozen or more mortal witnesses you have left alive on the battlefield, most of them should return alive to Northlands. Having seen their leaders dead die and possession, possessing of object, Murmandanus thought, they have little reason to return here. Let us hope and have a little desire to do this again. <laughs> I have little desire to do this again. What about the artifact? Owen asked. A useless sword. Oracle of all indicated hidden room where I might find it when I ask for assistance with the plan. Shortly after that mortal gentleman who picked it up returns to Sargas Sakot, he will discover it useless and curse the names of both of them for having spilled so much mortal blood on false prophecies. Seem James and Locklear poking in uh, the ruins near to keep Argus cold. I have feeling those two are going to keep me busy for moments with their questions about this place. Unfortunately, they are lo fortunately they are loyal. If I tell the subject is closed, they both trust me enough to leave the issue alone. You can always tell them the sword was truly what was buried here. Owen suggested the answer is good enough for the mortal. Artasuk, he said, Locklear will probably forget the matter once he sees the pretty young face in Grondor, but Jimmy is different, he won't accept it, though he will never ask anything more. I don't like that I will have to lie to him, he's a lawyer as a, as a job tech, as I ever, ever had. What about the Churani? Owen asked, nodding after that seemed eagerly concerned with books. I shall have to talk with them. A well-respected member of the Assembly of Magicians uh, named Mohoko Peppa already knows something of the event and he will help me assure their fears. Book said, thankfully they have their hands tied with the another but I mean individual at the moment. Satisfied Adrutta said his farewells and moved off to be of assistance in evacuating the remaining soldiers from the area. Fearing that some might become too curious and discover things best left unfounded. While watching the prince depart, Buck smiled quietly to himself, gaining Owen's attention. You seem to please about something, Owen said. What is it? You will note that, that the prince said nothing about your silence, Buck said. You know the secret of Setanan. Uh, in all of mid Kimia, only Prince Arutta, King Liam, Duke Martin, Thomas of Elevendar and myself do we know what lies beneath our feet. As if to reinforce the point, Book tapped his staff at Owen's feet. What are you saying? Smiling Buck began to lend him down the winding path towards the critics smashed southern gate. What that means is that Prince expects me to guarantee your silence. Uh, that will be difficult to do. With you in Tyburn and me in my academy, academy of Magicians at Stardock. It will require that I make a number of long and tiresome journeys for the sole purpose of ensuring you keep your silence. It seems a waste of time. Stopping to look in the sunset book seemed lost in thought. Of course, it is possible I could take you as a student of magic, your living expenses paid by in full by Prince Arutta. Are you interested in becoming the true magician, Owen? Laughing for the first time in great while, Owen uh, twirled his staff in his hands. I never wanted anything else. So that's the Petrel at Grondor and I think this is like the third time I have played this tour. No, maybe fifth, fifth time actually. So it was one of my favorite games. Lots of reading. A very old game. Lots of throwbacks to the Eye of Beholder and old old school RPGs. Uh, the 
GOG version works pretty well. And, and I, I was happy to see that it didn't, didn't glitch out many times. I made a mess with, the, with the, uh, destroying the save files and that was like a bad thing. But yeah, it's it's old school game and 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 worked pretty well. Uh, still loving this game. Uh, it's very slow at the start because while you are t told that you have you are you are in a hurry to get to Krondor, you need, still need to like go around and build build your characters and get experience and money and stuff like that, which helps you in the end game. Because it's going to like uh, difficult curve is is pretty high, and it's going to ramp up in the fifth chapter or so. So yeah, you need to plan this the game how to play it, and it took me a long time to play, especially when when the new games came out, and I just couldn't couldn't play anything else. But but to stream new games. But anyway, this is the YouTube series. Wanted to play this through. Wanted to show you the ending. Wanted to read all those text, and yeah, this is Predator Petrela Krondor. I don't think I'm going to continue with the, with the uh, Petrela Antara. It's not as good I hear here, but other old school RPGs. Yeah, might might show them to use that someday. But anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice evening or a day. Remember to play even the old games. They are pretty good. And I love this book series. I mean, this is totally great. There are lots of throwbacks. Lots of throwbacks in the, in the, in the old Raymond Day faced books. Anyway, happy uh, uh, Petriel at Krondor 30 years anniversary.